everybody. Here I am in uh, Memphis this morning with Renee Minrith in her beautiful spring garden and she's agreed to give us a tour. Hey Renee. Hi. Thank you so much for having us today. It's really wonderful to have you guys. Oh, this is really fun. And you were busy last fall. I sure was. Planting <laughs> lots and lots of tulips. That's right. And other bulbs. Okay. And um, this is the front yard. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I've seen a lot of, I've seen some of your before photos Mm -hmm. and you've made a lot of changes over the years. I, I really have done so, a lot of work. So where did it start? What was the first thing you did here? Um, several years ago, the first thing I started, when we first moved in here, um, unfortunately a lot of the, the structure plans had, had died oh, and yeah. so I was starting from scratch. And so I started with structure plants um, near the house and you know including the boxwoods, the yews, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, after I finally got that done a few years ago, I started creating more beds, including this bed okay. um, that I created last year. This was just this just went in a year ago. Last year, last March. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh, so, wow. Um, so I, things have really taken off. They really have. So now yeah. you were talking to me a little bit earlier about your sort of process for when you put in a new bed, mm -hmm. um, and then how you uh, change how that bed changes over time. It sure does. Yeah. Um, so I I always start with structure plants, and well, that comes after about a year of planning. I <laughs> do a lot of drawing. I do okay. a lot of research on plans, I think very carefully about what would be best for the soil and the light in the areas that I'm planting in. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll usually give the evergreen structure plants like the laurel and the boxwoods you see, mm -hmm. um, some azaleas, and then I'll usually add maybe, that was in spring last year, then maybe in the fall I'll add a couple of deciduous plants, but after that, I like to give myself time to breathe. I like mm -hmm. to think about it for another year or two. Mm -hmm. And while I'm doing that, thinking, I tend to add plants like tulips and annuals to kind of keep it, you know, full and colorful until I get a chance to decide what perennials I want to put there. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a smart way to do it. And uh, you've got lots of color. Yeah. Right now. So how yeah. many bulbs would you say you planted last um, fall? 4,600. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so what's your method of planting? Do you, when you plant tulips, do you, um, do you plant in clumps or do you dip, dig a big trench or how, how do you I do, do both. Do both? Okay. And it depends. Again, with these new beds like this, mm -hmm. um, it's easy to do trench method. And I, mm -hmm. I do love the trench method when I'm starting out in a new bed. Yeah. Um, when I have lots of room and lots of space, that's my favorite method. Mm -hmm. But um, clumping is probably my most favorite thing because I, with the clumping, I can surround it with perennials and evergreens so that when the foliage dies back, it's not bothering me to have to see the mess. Yeah, that makes um, sense. So what are some of your favorite companions for um, tulips and it, daffodils? It depends on um, whether it's a shade bed or a sun bed. Oh, yeah. Um, right. And so for sun beds, I like to use a lot of flowering perennials like echinacea. Um, Things that come up later. Yeah, and that will fill in. I have yeah. a lot of peonies. Mm -hmm. um, they come in, the flowers come in right on time yeah. to sort of fill that area. That's true. Um, and then shade beds, I use a lot of like lands ears and um, coral bells. Um, evergreens for all of the different spaces um, pretty much every single kind of perennial you can think of yeah. I probably got one of <laughs> if not more <laughs> well you keep adding beds so you, I do you, you have to keep adding beds because you keep finding more that's things right you want to try, that's right? exactly why I do it <laughs> so so this bed uh, went in um, a year or so ago mm -hmm. and then you have some other beds that um, in this front yard that you've also you, you just keep adding I more do. beds and, yeah. and uh, shrinking the grass area. That's right. <laughs> I'm not very, I don't have a good relationship with grass. No. <laughs> um, I've tried, but it's been difficult. It's especially hard under with under the shade trees. Right, under the big trees. Yeah. yeah. So I've sort of just used that as an excuse to slowly <laughs> eliminate them and give myself I like to say all of all of the pretty plants. Now I have a place to put all the pretty plants. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, so when you um, start a new bed, uh, what is your method? Do you add soil and compost, or do you use the existing soil, or how do you? Um, do I usually uh, it depends on the soil I'm starting with. 
Okay. So for this area here, it was very compacted soil, mm -hmm. uh, uh, clay soil. Uh -huh. And so I did actually, I did dig down, I removed the grass. A lot of times I'll use the no dig method mm -hmm. for my, my bed expansions, but for this one, the soil was kind of in such a state that I felt like I needed to add compost and really amend it. Mm -hmm. And so I did a lot of that for the couple months before I actually did mm -hmm. the, you know, plants. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, again, it kind of depends on what the soil is like that I'm starting with. Okay. And then um, under the tree roots, did you have any trouble planting? In around? this one area, I didn't. Um, in the front, um, I was not able to expand the bed any further. I was gonna maybe make it, you know, one way, but I, when I hit some roots, I had to stop and oh, right. re regroup and kind of So you're plan sort of letting the trees dictate. That's right. That's smart. All right, let's go take a look over here. Oh, these daffodils are so cheerful. I love this mix. Yes, it's one of my favorites um, from this year, new to me. Uh, it's called the Sunshine Boys mix from Color Blends. Oh, so pretty. Yeah. A mix I, of white and yellow with perfect, the orange cups. Oh, yeah. so pretty. The perfect thing um, for the beginning of spring to yes. make everything feel more joyful. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yellow always hits better in spring for some reason. It's it really just, does. Yeah, it's yeah. that early color. <laughs> we yeah. just can't wait. So um, I grow a lot of daffodils because I have a lot of rabbit problems in my yard, but I haven't mm -hmm. seen any rabbits here. Yeah, we um, we have a few, but not a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Same with deer. Um, it's minimal. We have some, but voles are oh. my main, you know, issue as far as animal go with the garden. Oh man, yeah. that's got to be pretty frustrating. Yeah, it can be, but <laughs> they don't bother the daffodils. They though. don't even touch them. They don't, but the yeah. but other bulbs and things. They can be susceptible yeah. to it. Yeah. So um, what are some of the strategies you use to uh, work against the, vol the voles? Um, so the first strategy that I adopted many years ago was realizing that I needed to live with them <laughs> um, and to sort yeah. of work with them in the natural order of things. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of um, predators that are very important to our ecosystem, mm -hmm. hawks, owls, that kind of thing, that I want to make sure that they're okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not you know, using poison or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to primarily use plants that they're less interested in. Um, like the daffodils. That's right. Um, they are maybe the main plant that I have that the voles are absolutely uninterested in. Okay. Um, I often will surround more in plants that they're more interested in with daffodils. Okay. And it does seem to act as a deterrent to mm -hmm. them. Do you have certain plants that they seem to really like a lot? Um, or does it yeah, matter? hostas. Oh. Hostas are a big one. Mm -hmm. um, so they do like tulips, um, also like hydrangeas, and most of the evergreens they leave alone, mm -hmm. so that's been okay. So when you plant, um, do you do anything when you plant specifically? To yeah, um, depending on the plant, I will often use wire, a wire mesh, and sometimes a wire mesh basket. Okay. Um, I plant so many tulips that I don't really use the baskets that it's just not mm -hmm. realistic. For but, four thousand for four thousand bulbs. Right. But <laughs> for like my hydrangeas, right. I will put them in a wire basket. Uh-huh. Um and in some areas I will dig down about a foot around the bed. Okay. And fill it with sharp lava rock. Which, oh, okay. again, they will come through it, but they don't like it. So it kind of is a deterrent. It slows them. them down a little bit. It slows bit. them down. Right. Yeah, exactly. And you said you have a family of hawks. I do. We have, we have two families. I think it was started as one family, one nest over there, one nest over uh -huh. there. And they visit every day. So They have lots to eat. They do. And they are very helpful. <laughs> you're, feeding, you're feeding the hawks. I am. I, I love them for that. So... So you have such clean, beautiful lines in these beds mm -hmm. and all of these, um, the repetition of all your boxwoods and, and you know, your structure plants. Yeah. So have you had some design training? I did. Um, when I was in doing my undergrad in Texas, I got my degree in art and art history. <laughs> okay. And so I'm an artist at heart. So this makes sense. Yeah. This is your, this is your art. Yes, it is definitely my art now. This has become um, my exercise, my mental relief, and my art form. So, so the last few years have required a lot of um, 
escape. <laughs> they, maybe. they certainly have, yeah. Working in healthcare during the last two years, um, I've really poured myself into the garden as a means of coping and it has worked wonderfully. Well, everyone else gets to enjoy that in your front yard too then. That's what my neighbors say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's nice. All right, I noticed that you have lots of pink and white tulips right now. Yes, I do. Um, do you plant the same colors every year or how does that work? Um, not every year and it's not always the same, but I do, pink is one of my favorite colors. Okay. And I love the combination of pink and white. And so I do tend to do some variation on that theme mm -hmm. most years. So do you keep the same color theme through the whole season with the tulips or do you change that up a little bit? Um, I do change it up a little bit. I like to start in the very beginning of uh, spring with um, daffodils with yellows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and a couple years ago I added the blue anemones because um, I think the blue and the yellow look pretty together. They really do. Uh, so that's like my early, and then I always have a few early tulips, uh -huh. which is what's out most right now. Uh -huh. um, and then I have predominantly the mid-season tulips, which for us last the longest here in Memphis. Okay. Um, and then I have the late tulips that usually start, um, you know, in the early, mid-April. Mm -hmm. um, around here, they sometimes can not last as long because of the heat, if, it, if we get a little bit of a heat wave. You get a few hot days, they yeah. go quickly. Yeah, yeah that's, that's hard. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and tulips, most tulips are annuals for you here? They is are. That, most okay. of them are annuals. Some of them will come back, like the green tulips, mm -hmm. and some of the lily flowering tulips will come back for a year or two. Okay. But between the voles and um, other things like that, that usually it's, it's best to depend on them as an annual mostly. So do you buy your bulbs pre-chilled or no? I, I have not up till this year, mm -hmm. but um, I've noticed a gradual warming of our winters and to the mm. point now that we really only get maybe eight to 10 weeks of the temperatures that the, the tulips need. And so I am planning on getting pre-chilled tulips starting next year. Okay, all right. Well, it'll be interesting to compare and see yes, what the difference that's is. That's what I'm planning to do. Yeah, yeah, that'll be interesting. So um, I also noticed that you have a lot of really um, charming seating areas yes. in this um, front yard. Yes. And um, I'd like to go take a look at a few of those. Okay. <laughs> I love that you have um, three seating areas in your front yard. I do. A lot of people don't think to put seating in the front yard, even yeah. if they have a beautiful garden there. Yeah. And then you never really go, I mean, you drive into your driveway, to the garage, whatever, and yeah. you never really get to interact with the garden or just enjoy it. Yeah, I I like my neighborhood a lot, I like my neighbors, and so we do, you know, sit up here a lot. My kids really like to sit up here, especially my son loves to sit right here. He and I like to sit here at least every weekend, um, just good. to sort of, we just sit quietly together Yeah, that's and nice. look at the garden. So. Well, there's a lot to look at right now, especially. Yeah. This yes. This is good. And this was a new project for you. It was. Um, I already had the bench, but I wanted to add some blue, my favorite color. Yes. And so I added these planters mm -hmm. um, and this to put my coffee on. <laughs> I mean, we all need somewhere to put our coffee. Yes. Yeah, this is great. This is a really nice spot in the morning. And then you have the benches over there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so it just gives you a different view. That's right. And a place to watch the birds. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So spring is long and beautiful here, it seems. Yes. What are some of the challenges that you face gardening here in Memphis, um, weather-wise? I'd say in spring, especially, one of the biggest challenges that we do face is fungal infections and um, just a lot of humidity, mm. a lot of wet conditions, mm -hmm. um, you know, so there are some plants that don't like that necessarily. So does it um, change what you grow or are there things that you do to to deal with those? It does change what I grow some mm -hmm. um, and in other times I take it as a challenge. <laughs> right? Yeah. It is <laughs> I'm going to try that. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. do it um, just to kind of see if I can do it. Right. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. So what are some of the things that you've been especially uh, maybe surprised or proud that you were able to grow? English roses. English roses. Yes. Okay. Um, and so yeah. do you have to spray for black spot with those? A lot, um, I, I only spray with a copper um, fungicide in late winter. Okay. And then I just have to let 
there ha there's always a little bit of black spot. Mm -hmm. And what I've done over the years is I found the ones that are more resistant and those are the ones that stay. Mm -hmm. and, and then we have a little bit of black spot every August and I just, we- Just let it go. We let it go. Yeah. yeah. Then, I mean, yeah. so you get to enjoy them while they're blooming. That's right. Earlier and then, yeah. yeah, just kind of let them go. Yeah. What about temperatures? We've talked about how um, the winters don't have quite as much cold that's as, right. For example, tulips yeah. might need. What about um, heat? Is is heat a problem in the it, summer? It can be. Um, I have a lot of shade, so mm -hmm. that helps a lot. But we do get some pretty high temperatures, particularly in August, mm -hmm. um, starting in late July and then going into September. We can um, regularly get into the mid 90s and often get into the 100s. For days at a time. Yeah. Yeah. So do you see things start to flag or do you water more when that happens? I do or? water more when that happens. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I'm, I'm luckier than some because I have so much shade that really takes the heat off for most of my plants. So things that you see um, in other parts of the country, people growing in full sun, for example, are you able to grow them in a little bit more shade? I, I yeah, it's, a, it's necessary. Because yeah. if I don't, they, they tend to burn they or can't. die. They yeah, just can't take they it. Tend to burn Interesting. Or die. So when we started talking today, uh, we were talking about this bed here in front mm -hmm. of us and how this is really only a year or so old. That's right. Yeah. Um, but this entire front yard is really only, what, like five, six, seven? Yeah, it's about six years old. It's a very young old. garden. Yeah, it just doesn't very look young. like it. Things yeah. really have taken off well for you. Yeah, they. Um, <laughs> I've done a lot of soil amendments. Uh -huh. I, I do a lot of organic um, fertilizing mm -hmm. and um, composting and it shows it makes a yeah. huge difference and they they yeah. really do seem to like it they do yeah. they do and so um how did you how did you start gardening in the first place is this the first is this your first garden no this is my second main garden okay. um about a year after we moved here 12 years ago mm -hmm. um we got our first house um as a housewarming gift my father-in-law got us or brought me um, some roses, I think it was six of them, that he had, I, I believe, started himself as oh, from cuttings. Oh, wow, that's so And um, there are these tiny little quart pots uh -huh. um, with these cuttings of roses, and he helped me plant them, and they just exploded. They just <laughs> took off, and I realized that the plants really thrived here. And it was amazing seeing those tiny little rose plants um, just become these huge plants, and I just, I was absolutely hooked. Like, that was, I just, that was it. just it. Yeah, yeah that from was then it. on. Renee, this has been so fun touring with you today and seeing your garden in spring. I wish I could see it in person in every season, uh, but luckily you have an Instagram account. Right? I do. Yeah. And it's called The Psych Garden. The Psych Garden. And so uh, be sure and follow her if you'd like to see photos in every season because right. you a great photographer. Yeah, I, I do post a lot of photos. And tell a lot of good stories too. Yeah. And so um, thank you so much for having us today. It's been a lot of fun. It's been really wonderful having you guys. <laughs>